It is curling day in Canada. This is what the day is about. It's about being out. It's about seeing this, the curlers behind us. <laughs> Punch bill, baby. We say hello, Canada. Come on, come on. Curling in and of itself is such an amazing part of the fabric of smaller towns. Let's go! Let's go! Ah! Curling Day in Canada presented by Pharmasave. And yes, for the second straight year, we are hosting a Curling Day in Canada festival. Your 2024 version comes from Melfort, Saskatchewan, about 160 kilometers northeast of Saskatoon and embracing the love of curling today. Yes, hello and welcome to Curling Day in Canada, a day all about celebrating the sport and shining a spotlight on the game our country loves. I'm Lindsay Hamilton here in Toronto, while my co-host, Canadian Curling Hall of Famer Bob Weeks, is staying nice and cozy at the Northern Lights Arena, home of the Melfort Mustangs hockey team. Bob, how is Melfort treating you so far? Boy, we have been overwhelmed by the hospitality here. And you mentioned those Mustangs. They played last night. They had a big 7 nothing win. But now this rink has been changed into the big festival, as you're going to find out. And Melfort is, I don't know how to describe it. It is a city. It is amazing. It's a small town of about, well, city of 6,000 or so people. But they have exploded with curling love. And like any small center in Canada, the hub of the center is usually the curling club. It was really exciting. Didn't really expect it, but yeah, very exciting. And the whole community has really rallied behind this event, especially in the past few days here. There's lots, lots of talk about it. And it was exciting for everybody. Um, like I said, we've been building on this for a long time. We've been raising money and, and increasing our league sizes and increasing our, our membership base. And uh, so when we were able to put this kind of cherry on the top, I think everybody was really excited and, and um, Looking forward to getting to work and putting on a great show. I think it was pretty awesome to see. I mean, it was a, it was a big task to take. We we started planning back about a year ago. So I mean, uh, for what it is, it's it's pretty good. I think anytime you can bring a national audience to a small town, it's a great thing, right? So having TSN here, having uh, some local talent, some professional talent here, um, putting on a big show, I think it's only going to increase curling in our community and the visibility of our community as a whole. It makes. Um, just brings the community together I guess you could say it's and the event itself it's not just curling it's lots of fun things and just trying to get people to come out and have a lot of fun I think it'll just show people that curling is a sport that can be all ages um, and that you know it's a great part of Melfort We've seen curlers from across the country who have also joined in on the celebrations. Keep posting your Curling Day in Canada experiences using the hashtag Curling Day in Canada. We'll keep sharing your photos and videos throughout the show, so stay tuned and watch those. Now, we need to bring in our third member of the group and the only Saski on the team here. Here's Britt Dort, and Britt, you were here late last night watching a transformation and really seeing a small town rally around this event. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to start by saying a proud Saskatchewanian, that's for sure. We know how much Saskatchewan people love their curling. They also do love their hockey. And despite the fact there is a lot of action happening behind both of us right now for this Curling Day in, Hawk or <laughs> curling Day in Canada Festival, just less than 24 hours ago, it was the place to be for local hockey fans and players. On Friday night, the community of Melfort comes out to support their local junior hockey team. Saskatchewan kid always kind of grew up and knew what the SJHL was. Um, lots of great talent goes through it and it's awesome to uh, come on in front of the fans in Melfort and see all the support. As the final buzzer goes, the Mustangs celebrate yet another win in front of their home crowd. 
And from there, the community-owned team rallies around an exciting event taking over their rink. I'm just giving back to, you know, kids, people that support us. Because I was there one day, too, as a small kid. And, I mean, getting all the support and giving it back now is definitely huge. So, yeah, no, I love doing that. We want to give back. And it's important for our hockey players to know that and, and do that. And I think it really sets them up for their future in life and, and really matures them and gives them a sense of giving back, which is very important, you know, whether you're in Malford or when they start their careers later in life. A different ice sport is being celebrated in Melfort today as Northern Lights Palace Arena is now home to Curling Day in Canada. It's not something you see see too often in small towns like this. So, yeah, to bring people in, uh, you know, and, and to notice uh, what small towns are, are really made of is uh, um, it's, it's really good to uh, um, bring that to uh, Melford here. It's fantastic, you know, to be nationally rec recognized. Um, that curling rink and the, and the people that are involved there work very hard and uh, they do a great job with, uh, with, the, with the facility but also the organization and uh, curling's really taken off in Melford and we're, and you know, even our guys have been involved in it, you know, through a little bit here through the season and they have a lot of fun with it. And I think we actually found the newest Melford Mustangs fan in Bob Weeks. We got to experience his first SJHL game last night, Lindsay. So I will say, Bob, you better get your stake in the Mustangs because they already clinched a playoff spot this year. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I, I just want to see the Maple Leafs do that and set the boards down for the Raptors after their next game. But really, what a great story of community coming together. I love it, Bob. All right, so from a small city all the way to New Zealand now, the love of curling is international. Now, New Zealand isn't exactly known as a hotbed for curling, so when the men's national team wanted to strengthen their training, they decided to move to Calgary to be closer to some of the best facilities and coachings curling has to offer. One small problem, though. They had nowhere to live. Solomon Volji has more. Whenever in a lifetime will a curling rink from New Zealand come and live in a, in a retirement residence. It's not what the New Zealand curling team ever planned when they decide to chase their dreams and move to Calgary for training, spending their winter living with the residents of Chartwell Colonel Belcher Retirement Home. Yeah, it was a little bit of a process in the making. Um, we had basically put the call out uh, on social media and spoken to a, a friend of ours who uh, works with, well, works within the Australian Curling Federation. We talked to her and said, do you know anyone who might be able to host us or a bit of accommodation somewhere just to kind of cut costs for us? She actually posted on Facebook and it went kind of viral and got picked up by Cassandra here at um, Chartwell who uh, pitched it to her team. So I actually saw the post on the World Curling Federation social media pages. They shared that this men's curling team from New Zealand mm -hmm. was looking for just short-term rental housing mm -hmm. um, while they were here training in Calgary. The residents were always watching the Scotties together, the Briars, um, they're big curling fans so I know that they would welcome them very easily. The average age at Chartwell Colonel Belcher is 84 and dinner is served at 4.30 p.m. However, the retirement home's newest residents are keeping the Canadian seniors young at heart. Oh my goodness, it's just wonderful. Couldn't be any better. Makes us feel nice and young again, <laughs> having them around. Every time the guys come down for breakfast, they always have a lineup of people coming up and wishing them the best and stuff like that. It's really good. It's really, it boosts the, the morale here. I think it's something that they're really thankful to be a part of, both the team, us, and the residents. It's a new experience, something that nobody's ever really been a part of. So I think that's really exciting. Team New Zealand has adapted to life in the retirement community as well. Activities normally reserved for senior citizens like bridge and bingo have become part of the Kiwis weekly routine. It's been great. Uh, we bump into people all the time in the hallways and that sort of thing and have some really good chats. Um, we've gone for breakfast with them, happy hour on a Friday afternoon and that sort of thing. It's been incredible. Um, the, everyone here has been amazing, um, really friendly, really inviting. And to be honest, the experience as a whole has just been way more than what we could ever imagine. The residents have become the team's biggest fans and they keep close tabs on their practice schedule, often boarding buses and heading over to the rink to watch the team train. Many of the residents are former curlers themselves and are eager to offer advice. So far they are coming out very straight. I've talked to a few of the guys. I was a curler 
and they say the ice is very good. The living arrangements are something neither the residents nor the team would have ever imagined, but it's been a great adventure for both sides as they embrace their odd couple living experience as much as possible. Uh, honestly, the biggest piece of advice that I've kind of taken on board from what they've, uh, what we've kind of been told and what they've been talking to us about was honestly just have fun and live life and just enjoy it. Um, we're here chasing a dream and trying to achieve um, something pretty special, but at the same time we've actually really got to enjoy living our lives and, and make the most of it because we know it's not going to last forever. The New Zealand curlers will stay here at the Colonel Belcher Retirement Residence in Calgary until March before they leave to Scotland to train ahead of the 2024 World Men's Curling Championship in Switzerland. Their long-term goal is to qualify for the 2026 Winter Olympics in Italy. Salam Valji, TSN, Calgary. Thanks, Salam. I'm glad the guys found a new home and best of luck qualifying for the 2026 Olympics. Well, speaking of the Olympics, someone who knows that experience very well is Olympic gold medalist Jennifer Jones. And a little more than a week after announcing that this will be her last Scotties, Jones is showing she is going out at the top of her game. But will the fairy tale ending continue as she goes up against a red hot Rachel Holman's rink? With more, here's Vic Rotter. Lindsay, thank you. Hello, Canada, and welcome to Calgary. And yes, that, of course, was the big news, uh, Joe, that she's going to retire from the four person game, still continue to play the mixed doubles. It's, I'm amazed. You know, she always just says simply, I love the game. And I think that still holds true to this day. It's not that she doesn't love the game anymore, that she's got some other priorities and so she'll continue on mixed doubles. Yeah, hard to believe this is the last time we're going to see Jennifer Jones at a Scotties and so special to watch her out there and Jennifer Jones is still Jennifer Jones. She's out there rising to the occasion and playoff Jones is a whole different animal. <laughs> Absolutely. It, look at the shot making. It's still there for her and this was in a qualifier against Selena Sturme of Alberta and Selena was just eliminated in the 3 4 page, but there it is lined up for her. How many times have we seen this from a six time champion? Jennifer Jones runs it back, bang. And now it sets up, of course, this matchup, which really could be, and we would be thrilled if this was the uh, gold medal game with Rachel Holman. So they, and this rivalry for Jones. The fact that she can step on the ice, still be competitive against Rachel Holman. Unbelievable, unbelievable career, unbelievable matchup. But what is even more unbelievable this year is the announcement of the retirement and how the teams handled it. We've talked about it with Team Canada. And I give a lot of credit to the three young ones because yes. they're basically been fired. What's their future? Where, where, where do they go from here? Are they taking phone calls? No, they're right here concentrating and they're trying to win a championship for Jennifer Jones. Oh, so now you've got Rachel Holman, three championships, but this year, for some reason, aren't you, don't you think she's as focused as she's ever been? Look at the kind of shot that she made yesterday against Carrie Anerson, yeah, four-time right. champion, and her ending came yesterday. Look at this. Yeah, for Rachel Holman, she's drawing so well. It's this precision on these peel weight hits. The intensity in her eyes, she is making these all week long and when it mattered most against Anderson. It is remarkable. The, the amount of work, Russ, that she puts in, not only on the ice, off the ice, she watches video. That's how really deeply she goes into the game. First person I saw when I walked in this building was Donnie Bartlett and he just looked at me and said, I just can't believe how much they practice and and that stuff off the ice too. They're ready. Don Bartlett is the two time Canadian champion with Kevin Martin. He is here as their coach. It is going to be a wonderful game tonight and just look what they bring to the table. The number of appearances, the number of wins, six titles for Jones trying to become the first ever seven and a fourth for Rachel Holman. Hope you'll join us. Tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, it is Holman against Jones. My goodness. Winner right through to the final. The loser will play Kate Cameron in the semi. You know, I've had a chance to cover Jennifer Jones for, for a lot of her career, and Jennifer Jones really is, I don't know how, how you can describe someone who's more passionate about the game, someone who is more driven to try and create great shots. I don't think she's, she's so focused exclusively on winning but she just wants to be the best 
and I was actually at a Curling Day in Canada show about three or four years ago, I think it was in Moose Jaw, where we actually announced her as the greatest woman curler of all time and having the greatest shot of all time. Lindsay, she's certainly going to go out in style, it looks like. Oh, absolutely. Be fun to watch. No doubt an incredible matchup. But I should note, Jennifer Jones isn't tough to keep that fairy tale ending going, Bob. Rachel Holman's rink, 47 and 5 on the season. That includes 37 and 1 against Canadian teams. So be sure to tune in later on tonight. We're just getting warmed up. We'll have more from Curling Day in Canada from Melford, Saskatchewan after the break, including a heartfelt reflection on Sandra Schmerler. Well, there are a number of Curling Day in Canada contests going on, including people sharing their best curling stories. Look at some of these costumes. And this year's winner will get an all-expenses-paid trip for four to the closing weekend at next year's Briar. You have until 11.59 Eastern tonight. So get going. Vote for your favorite at curlingcanada.ca. Honestly, Sandra Schmiller, she left such a legacy in our province and in this country. And just to be from the same place as her, uh, we hope to hopefully make the same kind of impact that she had on this sport and show the same kind of love and determination that she had. Sandra Schmiller was an amazing competitor. She, she was feisty. I loved her feistiness. I remember watching her win the Olympics in 1998, and that was kind of my first moment of seeing curling at that level and really inspired me to chase my dreams. She's the all-time, you know, um, person that you think of when you think of curling and success and just Everything that she has done for the sport of curling is just unbelievable. I definitely um, uh, look up to that and I try to uh, be like her. Well, the list of amazing Canadian female curlers is a long one. Jennifer Jones, Colleen Jones, Rachel Homan, just to name a few. But there is only one queen of curling. Sandra Schmerler left us far too soon, but her legacy lives on through her foundation and the love of curling she's inspired in others. Here's her oldest daughter, Sarah England. I am Sarah England, and my mom is Sandra Schmerler. For those who don't know, my mom was a part of the 1998 Olympic women's curling team who captured Canadians' hearts winning the gold medal. My grandma always shared stories about my mom on how she played different sports growing up, but it wasn't until she tried curling in grade seven gym class where she really fell in love. She stuck with it throughout high school and university, but it wasn't until she joined forces with Jan Becker, Joan McCusker, and Marcy Gooderite that she started making her mark on the world curling stage. In the first year together, my mom's team won provincials, and two years later, they won their first Scotties title, giving a Saskatchewan rink its first Scotties win in 13 years. They competed at Worlds and won the gold medal. My mom would go on to win two more Scotties as well as two more world championships. In 1998, curling became a medal sport at the Olympics for the first time. My mom and the team wanted nothing more than to represent Canada, but first she would have to conquer the Canadian Olympic trials. It took a little magic from Schmirler the curler to make it happen. What a shot! What a great shot! What a spectacular shot by the reigning world champion Sandra Schmirler. The Olympic win showed my mom's determination they refused to lose. In 2000, my mom lost a hard-fought battle with cancer. I don't remember a lot of her sickness, but one special moment my grandma shared with me was in September 1999, I was celebrating my second birthday. My mom was in the palliative care unit, so we were hosting my birthday there. Every time I gift, I would bring it over and show it to her in her bed. To me, it was a magical birthday, but I obviously didn't know at the time that it would turn out to be the last one we would celebrate together. People always say that in the darkest times, something will always make things brighter. I think that's exactly what the Sandra Schmirler Foundation did. In the darkest times of losing someone as influential as my mom, the foundation was born and brought so much hope and light to the future. The foundation helps to ensure that every baby born too sick too small and too early, has the necessary life-saving equipment and the chance to grow up and be a champion like my mom. It was a vision of her close friends and family to honor her amazing life, which touched the hearts of so many Canadians. As her daughter, I am so proud that the legacy and memory continues to live on, and the foundation is a living example of that each and every day.
including the most recent telethon last week, the foundation has raised over $1 million and has been able to donate over $9 million to hospitals across the country since 2001. I have been lucky enough to hear the countless stories of how my mom has influenced curlers from the highest of levels to locals at the rink. And one thing I have learned about my mom through these stories shared by friends, family, and fans is there are countless ways to be a champion curler in your community. It isn't just about winning on the ice, but representing who you are and sharing the love of curling with those around you. And the Sandra Schmerler Foundation has been helping babies born too soon, too small, or too sick since 2001. To date, the foundation has raised more than $9 million, and you can head to sandraschmerler.org to donate yourself. Well, the Girls Rock program is trying to produce the next Sandra Schmerler, a program designed to help young girls get involved in curling from a young age and develop a love for curling. The benefits go far beyond just the sport. They're endless. When it comes to women's sports, 2023 should go down as a record-breaking year for breaking records. Women's soccer continues to experience peak popularity in Canada. The WNBA's first game in Canada sold out Scotiabank Arena in Toronto in a matter of hours. 30,000 more fans attended a women's volleyball game at the University of Nebraska than this year's Super Bowl. And the Professional Women's Hockey League has smashed women's hockey attendance records game after game. The fans to their feet inside Scotia Bank Arena. 19,285 of them cheering loud and proud. Pro women's hockey is here. Even with the record-breaking progress, it's still a challenge to get young women involved in sport. According to a study by the organization Canadian Women in Sport, one in three girls leave sport in adolescence, compared to one in 10 boys. And as many as 62% of Canadian girls aren't participating in any kind of sport. That's where Curling Canada 2010 Olympic silver medalist Corey Morris and seven-time Scotties participant Elaine Dag jackson come in. As part of Curling Canada's Women in Curling Leaders Circle, they help lead Girls Rock, a clinic to introduce 9- to 16-year-old girls to curling. So this program is all about making sure that every girl that comes into this building to see us today feels like this is a warm and welcoming place, that curling is a place for everyone for young women, for women from every walk of life, all girls of all ages. And we want to provide that environment of, you don't need to be good at this, we just want you to come and try it. The female-led program made its debut in 2022 and has proven to be wildly successful. Last week in Calgary, demand was more than double the 68 available spots. And for the first time, the Girls Rock program is being offered nationally with clinics all across the country. I think that our hope is to really instill some good values in the girls when they come here. So the technical skills is one small part of the program, but we hope just by showing up in the room today, they've realized that they're courageous, they've shown curiosity, um, and so hopefully those are values and, and some, some achievements that they can tick off and go, okay, I can do this. And it's not just curling, it shouldn't stop at curling. I can apply this to anything in life. And what do the girls think? Girls rock! Love it. Girls rock. A fantastic program, hopefully leading to a lifelong love of the game. Meanwhile, we're just getting warmed up here on Curling Day in Canada. We've got plenty more to come from Melford, Saskatchewan after the break. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on treaty land, referred to as Treaty 6 territory, and that the city of Melfort and all the people here are beneficiaries of this treaty. Treaty 6 encompasses the lands of the Cree, Dakota, Nakota, Soto, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are dedicated to ensuring that the spirit of truth and reconciliation and Treaty 6 is honored and respected. This acknowledgement also reaffirms our relationship with one another, and we are committed to move forward in partnership with Indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation 
and collaboration. Thank you. Well, like any sport, you really only have to try for the first time to fall in love with it. And Rocks and Rings and the Alberta Health Consortium are working to give First Nations children the chance to experience, enjoy, and perhaps fall in love with the sport of curling. About an hour east of Calgary, just off the Trans-Canada Highway, lies the Siksika First Nations community. Hockey and basketball are the most popular sports here, but what about curling? Eh, it just looked a bit strange at first. Egg Farmers Rocks and Rings, presented by Curling Canada and First Nations Health Consortium, are trying to change that. Introducing curling to First Nations communities across Alberta, the program provides all the necessary equipment to the community, including the floor curl equipment, program materials and pusher sticks to be inclusive for participants of all abilities. For many of the Siksika children, through this program, this was the first time they'd seen or even held a curling stone. It just kind of felt really good to just find something new to do. I enjoy it because like, I could knock his, uh, his rocks out. Being able to run it in a gymnasium like this, we're not out in a, in a rink with, on the ice, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a great way for um, people to get some exposure to a sport that they might not have had otherwise. Now in 13 communities across Alberta, one of the program's goals is to further improve the physical, mental and emotional well-being for First Nations communities. One of the biggest things in First Nations communities is isolation and Siksika being the second largest nation in Canada uh, with the chance to actually play an activity with their family I believe will support the whole household in that. Uh, mental health, just getting out of the house, socializing, having fun, laughing. You just get to hang out with your friends and have fun with it. And well, you just get to make good relationships with people you don't know. This was like way more fun than just like laying around my house and just, I would prefer to do this uh, more than uh, stay at my house. I really enjoyed this today. Key to the success of the program is how accessible the sport is. Regardless of age or ability, everyone can join in. What this program means to the residents or the First Nation members is it's actually a chance for them to participate in a, in a program where the whole family can participate. You know, it's, it transcends generations. Grandparents can play with uh, grandkids and enjoy the sport of curling, you know, learn something new. I just think it's a great opportunity for um, some inclusivity uh, and accessibility for the um, people in the nation to have another option or variety of uh, activities to do. I see my kids are getting better at this and I'm, I'm learning too. They're teaching me how to play, right? And it's not just them, uh, uh, they're, they're all like teaching each other too, like giving each other pointers. And I like that, you know, they're, it's not like a competitive thing. They like to help each other and we're all into this, right? And I'm into this, like it, it's fun. I, I, I can't wait for a future future times when we have like tournaments and stuff. I'm looking forward to that. Welcome to Melfort. Well, we'll have more from Curling Day in Canada. In fact, when we come back, we're gonna introduce you to the most popular man in Melfort, Saskatchewan. Well, this was last night here in Melfort. We got to take part in a fun spiel, and it was great to be back on the ice. And so it was uh, Britt, she was my teammate there. The great event was put on by Burgo Industries, a local company, one of the largest employers in the area. Burgo Industries was the largest donor towards the Melfort Curling Club Revitalization Project Campaign. Well, also in Melfort, I got to meet a local celebrity, and that's Danny Fidelic. He has been with Special Olympics Saskatchewan for 15 years, and he is one amazing curler. Here is Danny's story. My name is Daniel Alfadelic. Uh, I live in Melfort, Saskatchewan. I was born and raised here. Well, I curl and I bowl during the winter, and I go to hockey games, and I just work. I, I born on, on, on a farm, so I just west of Melfort, so I kind of do all that stuff and work around town. I've been curling for uh, since I was about like uh, seven years old. Oh, I just like it. I was born and raised, and I just love it. I just 
I do like I curl like four or five games a week, so I I, I curl a lot. I like it in it exercise and you meet to go new places and stuff like that and see different areas. I'm off to, uh, I don't know, I found uh, Calgary uh, I don't know, on uh, Sunday for uh, INASA games. This is my uh, I don't know, fifth one. My third is Scott Earl. My second is uh, I'm Mitchell Moore. My lead is Ronnie Mitchell and my alternate is Isabel uh, Isenical. I like fun and I like I meet new people, meet new stuff, and I and I kind of help, help out the I I the team the every once in a while just uh, help out. And the city of Melford has really embraced and rallied around this team. Earlier today, they got a special send off. They were piped in, and the team from Melford beat out nine other teams to represent Saskatchewan at the Special Olympics Winter Games starting next week in Calgary. And get this: in their final game. They were tied going into the final end, but they managed to steal four. What a return. Congrats to the team and good luck to Calgary. So many great stories here in Melford and uh, here's a guy whose company is uh, really responsible or certainly in a large way of, of making Curling Day in Canada possible here. And uh, Yvonne Guillen, the CEO of Pharmasave, presenting sponsor of Curling Day in Canada. Welcome, thank you for being here and, and taking the time and I guess the obvious first question I want to ask you is, why did you want to get involved with Curling and Curling Day in Canada? Well, uh, first of all, let me say thank you for having me. I'm so excited. It's such a fantastic event. So having a great day so far. But now to answer your question, Bob, I, I think uh, there are two main reasons why we felt this was a perfect fit for Pharmasafe. The first one is because we feel that curling is perfectly aligned with the mission um, of Pharmasafe, of uh, making Canadians' lives healthier through sport and wellness. And then I think the second one, uh, which I think it's quite important, is because uh, curling is uh, truly a grassroots community event. It's a true social experience. It cuts across all ages, all demographics, uh, and, uh, and therefore it challenges everyone that participates to uh, stay actively healthy and have fun. And our owners uh, uh, felt it was a perfect fit. So I don't know how much you know about Pharmasafe, Bob, but uh, it's a co-op um, of uh, 900 independently owned and operated pharmacies all across Canada. So all of our owners are deeply connected to their communities. And therefore, this is a way for us to give back and make sure that we are returning what those communities that we serve are giving us. 900 stores I know are locations across Canada and, and I think that's almost probably about how many curling clubs there are. There's probably a Pharmasave and a curling club in every city, town and village in this country that uh, of, of a somewhat size. But for you personally, what have you seen here this week that's kind of caught your eye and, and made you think, yeah, we made the right move here? Well, I think it's the, the excitement in the community. I was, uh, as you can imagine, I was at our Mel Melford store this morning. Uh, the entire team there is doing an amazing job. The store is, has lots of uh, Curling Canada um, uh, promotions and, uh, and trying to raise awareness for the event. But everyone is talking about Curling Day in Canada here. Um, it's so exciting to see all the families, kids having fun. Um, so all together, we feel it's a perfect way for us to show our commitment to communities across the entire country. All right, well, curlers from across the country are continuing to post their Curling Day in Canada photos and videos to social media. Look at some of these. These are brilliant. Please keep joining in on the celebration. Use the hashtag Curling Day in Canada. And there's lots more ahead coming up here as we return to Melford after this. Welcome back to Curling Day in Canada. And when you think about the sounds of curling, what comes to mind? Is it someone yelling, hurry hard, or the hit of curling stones? Well, how about if I asked you to think about what the typical curler looks like? What do you envision? Dimitri Jean-Paul is showing that representation matters, and in more ways than one, breaking down barriers for generations to come. Claire Hanna has more. Dimitri Jean-Paul isn't like other curlers. He's a member of the BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and People of Color community, and also happens to be deaf. That was fun. It was, I really enjoyed it. Growing up, curling wasn't a sport Dimitri played or even knew about. 
It wasn't until one day when he was flipping TV channels that he saw the briar. He was fascinated by the game's strategy and intricacies. He was also hooked. Well, I used to watch it on TV on the sports channel, and I never see anybody of color, anyone black. So in the future, that's my dream. I want to see more people from the community out there and playing and grow black athletes in the sport for the future and for it to be passed on to the younger generation. Dimitri curls about four times a week, playing on both hearing and deaf teams. It has its challenges when playing with his hearing teammates. Instead of yelling, hurry hard, Dimitri relies on hand signals to communicate with his teammates. So we'd have to set up hand signs like sweep, for example. Halt if you want somebody to be off the broom. If you want them to do one shot, you do this or on or off the ice, take your broom on or off. Getting other members of the BIPOC and people with disabilities community involved in curling has its obstacles, but Dimitri sees it as a challenge, inviting underrepresented communities into the sport of curling. Well, when I see a barrier, I don't look at it that way. I feel good. I look at it as a challenge. Or, and I look at the actions. And if I see something that I don't like, then I share my opinion so that that person will learn. And especially if the person is open-minded, then I know you can break down those barriers. One of the first steps in breaking down barriers is inclusion. Dimitri wants to lead the way by introducing members of the BIPOC community and people with disabilities to curling. You invite them out to the experience. Get them to be involved. So. For example, any event that you go to, give your friends a call, give your family a call. Representation also matters, and one of Dimitri's goals within the sport of curling is to be a role model for new curlers learning the sport. I'd like to be able to teach diversity to hearing and the deaf community. Curling to all. And I want people to know that if I can do it, they can do it, and I want people to learn for that. And I think it's really important to be open-minded and to show. That's what's gotten me involved and brought me on my journey. And so I want to be able to do that as well. Next up on the calendar for Dimitri are tryouts for Team Canada, as he hopes to represent the Maple Leaf at the Deaf Olympics. Dimitri also has aspirations of going to the Briar with Team Ontario. But until then, his main focus is to get as many people with disabilities and people of color onto the pebbled ice. Claire Hanna, TSN, Ottawa. All right, alongside Pat Simmons, a legend in the game of curling, who's teaching others to fall in love with the sport. Pat, tell us a little bit about why you're here today. Uh, you know what, just curling in Antana is just a great initiative, obviously. Um, it's, it's a sport that has so much to offer and so much to give back and, and such a great sport, whether you're recreational, competitive, uh, all of the above. Um, you know, there's so many uh, life lessons and, and just great opportunities and great fun. So, uh, yeah, I just want as many of the, of the kids, the youth to, to take it up as possible. How exciting is it for you to introduce these young athletes to the sport, especially in your home province? Yeah, no, it's unbelievable. Um, just, just love it. These, these camps, these days uh, are just fantastic, and, and uh, you know, everyone has fun and, and uh, so many smiling faces, and and uh, and then get to keep seeing them year after year at different things, which is just great, right? So, uh, you know, it's lots of fun. Just as much fun for me as them. Well, there was a lot of knowledge given to the athletes today, including these two who took part in it. Tell me about what you enjoyed. Uh, it was all really good. Um, we went through everything real kind of basic, which is always good. Sometimes I get into bad habits. It's good to go back and make sure I'm doing it right. And same for you. What did you enjoy about it? I really liked relearning the basics and the finding things you can improve on. And from your perspective, Pat, you know, what's important for young athletes trying out in this sport? Just to have fun first and foremost, uh, to enjoy it, uh, have fun, and, and uh, you know, find kind of the path they want to take. Whether it's again just kind of a, a fun sport recreationally, or if they want to get more competitive and, and uh, you know enjoy it with your with uh, your teammates and, and uh, get the whole family involved. Well, thanks so much, and happy curling day in Canada to all of you. 
Well, I probably could have used Pat last night when you forced me out of my curling retirement. I had to throw a couple of rocks. I'm not sure if you saw. They weren't as good as Bob's. <laughs> you were also rocking that sweater last night when you were curling. We have some great curling day in Canada swag here that they have given us. They have. It's beautiful colors. You got the gray. I got the blue. It's not just clothing. Look, you can get mugs and everything. Yes. There's lots of it, and it's going to a good cause, Lindsay. And look at you. You even got the lid on. Yeah. I even have my toque, Bob. I think this is the first time I've ever worn a toque in studio, but I have to say it is cozy. It is comfy. <laughs> I'm happy you two are indoors this year staying warm because, Bob, I know it was chilly last year for you, so stay warm in that sweater. And, hey, for everyone watching, you can also purchase these sharp-looking sweaters yourself through Curling Canada. 100% of proceeds support youth curling programs across our country. You can go to curlingdayincanada.ca and check out all the stylish Curling Day in Canada merch. It is very comfortable. I'll give it an A+. All right. Meanwhile, we'll play more from Melford, Saskatchewan, coming up after the break, including one of the wildest bond spiels we've ever seen. That's coming up next. Hi, I'm Suzanne Lullaby, uh, one of the Queen of Canada. Stick curling is growing in popularity amongst the sport, allowing curlers an alternative method to the traditional slide, with competitive events taking place for those who participate using a stick. It allows curlers the ability to prolong their participation in the sport. Many will transition to using a stick following an injury or their flexibility is reduced and the delivery stick is essential for wheelchair curlers. It serves as an innovative way to introduce players to curling. Fantastic. The more the merrier. Now, as we've mentioned today, of course, it's all about celebrating the sport of curling. And Bob, on the topic of celebrations, the Oakville Curling Club, they put on a party to remember last September. They did. And what it's what happens when you put on a 2SLGBTQ1 plus bond spiel and it turns in to the biggest bond spiel and the biggest party of the year. And that's what happened when Scott Cook and Aaron Flowers decided to do something at the Oakville Curling Club. Curling is a place for everyone. An individual's journey into curling begins with community clubs. As such, Oakville Curling Club members Scott Cook and Aaron Flowers wanted to give back. We had a lot of community members, um, LGBTQ, but we had allies come as well, and so um, they came to the club and I think, you know, the, the consensus was that they felt super safe here. They, the environment that we put on uh, made them feel comfortable to come in and be themselves um, in, you know, a spot that maybe isn't always, um, you know, as inclusive. The event was a hit with about 100 people showing up and showing their support. And the support is crucial so the clubs are able to create environments where people feel welcome and enjoy their experience not only from the 2SLGBTQI plus community, but from all walks of life. It was exciting to see the response. I knew that having it in our own backyard, my community, um, I think there's a real craving um, for a lot of marginalized communities to, to belong in spaces that um, we often just become very comfortable. And when I say we, I, I think as a, a white woman who curls, I often don't see the barriers. To, to other communities when it comes to curling. So I think for me, it was exciting to have something that I knew was going to be a safe space for someone to come and join for one day of their lives in curling. But it wasn't just local curlers who showed up. Hi, I'm Giselle Olabai, uh, one of the queen of Canada. Yeah, I'm a drag queen for the last 15 years. And uh, yes, this is who I am. I know how hard it is to do a uh, something that is out of our comfort zone but i love when people stick together and just do whatever they want so i'm i, I just think it's always fun to have a community and discovering new community is the best and they are an amazing community of people that love each other and enjoy this the art of the sport too so it's it's really fun we want to do entertainment we want to do entertainment in an lgbtq way and i and i think you know when when you think lgbtq entertainment you think drag queens and so we just had this idea to like reach out to the winner of Canada's Drag Race. Joining Giselle Lullaby was three-time Scotty's winner, Emma Miskew. Not everyone feels comfortable asking questions on how, what they can do to make a difference and what steps they can take to make their space more inclusive. 
I think that's the first step is in whatever your home club is, just asking those questions, like how can we make our club more inclusive and more welcoming? The hope is that there can be more events like this, more inclusivity, more acceptance among not just the curling community, but everywhere. It doesn't matter who you are or how you identify, curling should be for everybody. We changed the whole club to a, an atmosphere that would create safety amongst the community. And I learned a lot from how we, as a sporting organization, when we do put gender specifics on how we organize leagues, it can become a barrier very, very quickly to people. And curling has such an opportunity to become um, a real place of safety and belonging in sport. Well, that sounds like a fun bond spiel. Meanwhile, let's check in one final time to see everyone across Canada's curling day in Canada social media posts. There's some terrific costumes. The celebration will be going on all day, so keep uploading those photos and videos. A reminder, the hashtag is curling day in Canada. Love to see people celebrating coast to coast. And we're not done yet. Much more from curling day in Canada brought to you by Pharmacy. Coming up.